www.ironmichaels.com. Um, so make sure you check out all these awesome products. I'll let you guys know what we'll be using as we go. Um, and then when this uh, video is finished, you can go and rewatch it if you want to. So it'll be um, posted on michaels.com. So if you miss something or if you just want to watch for inspiration now and then craft along with us later, you can go back to michaels.com and you can um, watch it a little bit later. So uh, that being said, I think we're going to get started. Um, let us know in the chat if you've poured before, if this is your first time ever hearing about paint pouring, um, if you've been pouring for many years, we'd love to know your experience level. We'd love to know if you've used our product before. Um, but yeah, we're going to get started. So um, here's some of the supplies we'll be using today. Um, you can see here in front of me, I have this metal pan. So this is just for catching the paint. You can see I've got some paint in here already from one of our last pours. So whenever we do paint pouring, we always like to do it in one of these um, disposable uh, metal pans. They're inexpensive, they're easy to find, and they um, really help with the mess. So they kind of catch all the extra paint. We're also going to be using um, some plastic cups here. So I've got some disposable cups. So um, you can use paper cups or whatever, you have silicone cups, whatever you've got at home to um, mix your paint in. I've got some tongue depressors or you can use spoons or popsicle sticks, whatever you've got um, to mix your paint as well. And then as far as products, um, I've got this is our folk art pouring medium. So this is a super awesome product. Um, you can get this at Michael's and this is what makes the paint flow so beautifully when you mix it um, into the medium. So this sort of keeps the paint flowing. Like I said, our paint is super rich and creamy, our folk art paint. So this makes it a flow a little bit better and it also keeps the paint from mixing together so your project won't get muddy. So if you were just to add water or something to your paint, of course your paint would be thinned down and it would flow, but they would all run together and it would just turn brown, which is not what we want. So you mix it with this and this keeps it from um, doing that. And then like I kind of said, we're gonna be using our folk art acrylic paints today. So um, all the colors we'll be using today you can get at Michael's. So just our regular folk art acrylic paints. These are our favorite to paint with and pour with. Um, and then just a regular little pumpkin. We got this cute little guy from Michael's. Um, so you can get these at Michael's. They've got big ones and small ones, um, and they're super fun to craft on. They're great decor. Um, you can keep them, you know, next year or the year after because they're faux pumpkins, of course. Um, so we love crafting on these little guys. All right. Um, so I'm also going to grab some gloves just uh, to keep it a little bit less messy. So if you get this on your hands, you do, don't need to worry um, because it's, it's non-toxic and it's water-based, so you can just wash it right off your hands. I won't recommend getting it on your clothes because it probably won't come off your clothes, but it's safe to get on your hands. But um, just so I don't mix the colors from project to project, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some gloves on. So Jesse, a lot of people are pouring with us for the first time today, so that's pretty exciting. Welcome, guys. We're excited to show you how to do it. Yeah. Okay, so let me move this for a second. All right, so I'm going to show you how to mix the paint. So like I said, I've got my little uh, plastic cup here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a tongue depressor, <clears throat> and I'll show you how I mixed. Um, this looks like I accidentally mixed all the colors. I didn't save one to show you, but so this is um, folk art teal. So I'm going to put a little bit of this into a cup. I'm just going to squirt it on in there. Oops. It's running out. And then I'm going to take my folk art pouring medium and I'm just going to put a little bit at a time just to thin it. So it kind of depends on the paint that you're using. Since folk art is so rich and creamy, we recommend a one to one ratio. So one part paint and one part pouring medium. If you're using something a little thinner like Apple Barrel or a different brand, you might need a little bit less pouring medium. So just keep that in mind. The ratio may change depending on which paint you're using. And then I'm just going to use my tongue depressor to stir it up. So you can see here, it's looking a little bit lighter than the color we want, but that's okay. When um, it'll just keep on mixing and you'll mix that milkiness right out of it. So this will dry completely clear. It will not affect, it looks a little bit white coming out as you guys saw, but it will not affect the color of your paint. So just keep on mixing it and that color, that whiteness will go away. You can yeah. see here, it's already getting darker. And as Jesse will show you a little bit later, we're going to do a really cool uh, specialty pour. And in that uh, specialty paint, you yeah. probably don't need to add as much pouring medium because it's already a little thinner than our normal folk art, folk art acrylic yeah. paint. Yeah, so you can see here. So what I always like to say is um, you want it to be syrupy. So you don't want it to be, you know, completely watery and you don't want it to be, of course, as thick as it was out of the bottle. You want it to be syrupy. So I always like to see when I lift it up, I like to see that sort of string go down. So here. I can show you in these ones that we mix ahead of time. You can sort of see that string running down. It's hard to see, maybe on the front view you can see it. So you've got that string running down. That's the perfect consistency. That's what we like to see. So 
uh, that being said, I've got all my colors mixed. Um, and these colors that I'm using, I've got, like I said, this one was called teal. I've got magenta, navy blue. And again, I, I pre-mix all of these so you don't have to watch me mixing all of them because that's kind of boring. Um, and then I've also got one of my favorite, favorite folk art paints. This is our treasure gold. So this is one of the most metallic paints um, really ever, in my opinion. <laughs> so um, a lot of times when you get super metallic paints, they're smelly or they're um, solvent based and they're toxic and they're just, that's, that's the only way to get that super, super high shine. But this one is not, this is completely um, non-toxic and water-based. So you can get this on your hands. It doesn't smell like anything. It's just like the rest of our acrylic paints, but you'll see, you can see here in this final pumpkin, it's super, super shiny. So make sure you guys grab some of that from Michael's. Get all my supplies lined up. And you can see I got my gloves on. I'm gonna grab my pan back over here. And we're gonna pour on this little pumpkin. So um, you don't really need to do anything to prep the pumpkin. So if you were planning on leaving some of the areas open and you wanted to say like base coat it in pink or something, you can totally do that. But this is just how it came from Michael's, this sort of cream color. And we're just gonna leave it as is. So what you do is you take the paints and you just start pouring it. So it's a little bit different pouring on 3D objects versus um, flat objects because the paint is gonna wanna run down. So I'll show you a couple uh, tips to kind of keep that from happening. I kind of like that look. I don't think it looks bad, but of course it kind of wants to, since it's, you know, vertical, it wants to run down as opposed to just sitting flat as if we were using a canvas. Any so questions just, before I get started then? Yeah, Emily has a great question. Could you do this with a real pumpkin? You absolutely could. So um, it's just easier on a faux pumpkin because um, it'll last longer, of course. You don't need to worry about any moisture. So with real pumpkins, of course, they're, you know, they're real. They have lots of moisture inside. So that moisture could come out and it could sort of, your paint won't last as long, but it should be fine. If you keep, especially if you keep it inside. If you keep it outside, I can't, you know, we can't guarantee that paint will last a super long time, but it'll definitely, if you want to do it a couple days before Halloween, it'll definitely last through the holiday for sure. You definitely can. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to start pouring. Again, this is, this is navy blue. So I'm kind of just going to start drizzling. I want to do a little bit at a time since it is a 3D object. I don't want to do too much because again, it is going to want to drip off because it's, it's a vertical surface. It's not laying flat. It's going to want to drip. So I'm just going to start with a little bit at a time. And I'm going to do my, this is called teal. I love those colors together too. It's like a really subtle fall color palette without it being your typical orange and brown yeah. and yellow. We love jewel tones for fall. We think mm -hmm. they're so, so beautiful, um, sort of getting ready for the winter season. I love all these beautiful jewel tones. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I'm gonna swirl this around a little. So I've got my two colors. Before I start adding the pink, I'm gonna swirl it just a little bit. And you can see you can kind of manipulate the way that it moves. You will add a little bit more. You can see I just added a lot to the top because that will run off. So you just want to sort of drip down. Again, if you wanted to base coat this first, you could if you didn't want any areas showing or you could just do your best to cover the whole thing in paint either way. I'm going to wipe my hands off as I go so I don't make a mess. And then I go ahead and I'm going to grab this color is magenta. And I'm going to put some of this on here too to sort of brighten it up. Ooh, that's so pretty. I love that. That's really pretty. And we're just going to sort of keep moving it around. And you can kind of just keep on layering it. So if you feel like you need more navy, go back and add the navy. If you feel like you need more aqua, go back and add the aqua. It's sort of like your imagination, whatever is in your head, is, has no limits. The sky is the limits when it comes to paint pouring. So again, you just kind of keep tilting it until it sort of is the way that you want it. Some more pink and you can get it on the sides too if you feel like you're not really getting the sides as much as you'd like you can start pouring it a little bit lower and that's a great sort tip. of get full coverage yeah how's everybody doing any questions then um not could you move the project just a little bit higher in the frame so that we could see better perfect oh, yeah yeah definitely Awesome. Yeah, if anything like that, guys, if you ever can't see it or anything like that, please just holler. Sometimes I, I get really into the craft and I forget to be on the camera. <laughs> so just <laughs> say so. Yeah, we're happy to do whatever you guys need from us. 
And so you can see the sides are looking really pretty. It almost looks like a spider web. Yeah, it does. Very Halloween-y. Yes. Wipe off my hands a little bit just so I, before I pick up the cups, just kind of limit the mess a little bit. Okay, so now for the last color, this is the treasure gold that I was telling you about, and this color is copper. So I'm going to show you guys how this looks on here. This is my favorite, favorite paint that we have. Ooh, look at that. So you can see this one's a little bit thinner. Like we said, Emma said a lot, sometimes our specialties are a little bit thinner, so you need less pouring medium, which is a really good tip. So now you can just keep swirling it around. Oh, sorry. Why do you pour off the uh, pumpkin and then pour onto the pumpkin? Why not pour just directly onto the pumpkin at first? That's a great question. So when you, like, you first pour, it just kind of wants to do that big drop. So if you kind of pour in motion across it, you get nice uh, fine lines and they just, it's less paint. So if you were to just sort of like dump it straight on there, it would just like kind of glob. So that, that's not a bad way to do it. You still could end up with a beautiful pumpkin, but it's just something that I've kind of gotten in the habit of doing, whether it's a canvas or a pumpkin, I start off and I kind of like drizzle it back and forth. So whenever I'm turning or starting and stopping, I don't have that like little like puddle of paint. I sort of avoid that. That's a great tip. Yeah, that's a great question. So pretty. As you can see, it's turning out really beautiful. Nice and messy, just the way we like it when we're crafting. So I'm gonna put a little more, I see there's a little bit of open space over here. So I'm gonna pour some more teal. So Jesse, if people don't have tongue depressors at home, what are some substitutes they could use to help mix their paint? Um, popsicle sticks is what we usually use, which is really similar, of course, so you probably don't have those either. Um, you can use plastic spoons or plastic knives or even plastic forks if you've got plastic utensils at home. Um, if you wanted to use like real spoons, you probably could just wash them right away and make sure you wash them before you use them again. Um, cause I don't want you to ruin your spoons or make sure you don't, you know, use them when there's still paint on it for sure. Um, but yeah, there's lots of things you could use if you've got even like an old pen that ran out of ink or something, whatever you've got at home to just stir it up and then you can toss away. That's awesome. And Myra just said, um, chopsticks also work, which is a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Chopsticks would be perfect. Yeah. I feel like everybody has chopsticks in their junk drawer whenever you order totally. Chinese food or something and you just kind of stick the packs yeah. in there. So yeah, that's a great idea. For skewers. Mm -hmm. so people have skewers if you're, you yep. like to grill out. So yeah. all great ideas. So you can see how beautiful this is turning out. You can just keep adding and keep adding and keep adding. And then when it dries, um, it's just, I mean, it's shiny before it dries, but this is our, our final one for you guys to check out. So pretty. It dries so beautifully. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. So Jesse, Krista wants to know what would happen if you just poured with straight up acrylic paints with no pouring medium? Yeah, so if you pour with just straight acrylic paint, first of all, if you use our folk art paint, um, our folk art paint is super rich and creamy. So it would kind of just glob onto your pumpkin. It wouldn't flow because it's made for, um, for painting. And so it does, it's not super runny. It's not really watery. Um, so that's why you need to thin it down. But if you were using a different brand that was a little bit thinner, um, you, that still would be an issue because the paint would run together and it would turn brown. As you can see here, the colors are staying separated and none of the paints running together and mixing and getting muddy. Um, and that's because of the pouring medium. So if you're using a thin paint or if you're gonna mix it with water or something, it would kind of just be a like a runny, muddy mess. So that's why um, this is such a great product, this folk art pouring medium, because it keeps all the colors separated. That's a great question. Yeah. So one more question before you move on. Um, someone asked, yeah. they're just confirming that uh, they're asking if it's a one-to-one -one ratio of, of paint to pouring medium. Do you want to talk about what consistency you look for again? Definitely. So um, whenever we're using folk art acrylic paints, we usually recommend a one-to-one -one ratio. And that's because our paint is super rich and creamy. So you need a good bit um, of pouring medium. But like I said, if you're using a different brand of paint that's a little thinner, you might need a little less pouring medium because you don't want it to get too thin and watery. So I always like to look for this string here. Can you see? It's hard to see on the top view, but on the side view, the front view, you can see that string that's running down. That's what I look for. I like it to be sort of a syrupy consistency. That's how I know it's gonna be a good pour. So when you're mixing, I would just add a little bit of pouring medium at a time until you get that perfect consistency, that perfect stringiness. Awesome. Great question. Anything else before we hit up our next project? I think we're good to go. Oh, you know, Rosemary has one question. Can you spray with a clear sealer to protect from moisture? Yes, you can. 
Um, so definitely, I, I always recommend our Mod Podge um, clear acrylic sealer. It's in an aerosol can. That is great for sealing pretty much anything. Um, but again, when it comes to real pumpkins, the moisture is coming from the inside, so it's really hard to control. So if you want to put this pumpkin outside, I highly recommend spraying it with our Mod Podge acrylic sealer or a Mod Podge Ultra even, and that will protect it outdoors. Um, but again, for a real pumpkin, the moisture is coming from the inside, and again, it's kind of hard to control that. So but again, if you just want it for a few days, that's it's a great idea. It'll, it'll definitely last that long. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, jump into our next project. So we're going to pour one more pumpkin. And I think people are excited to see here. you mix the paint with the pouring medium again. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're definitely yeah. going to do that. So for this one, we're going to do sort of a different shaped pumpkin. And we're going to um, do sort of a more traditional uh, Halloween palette. So uh, I'll show you guys right now. We are going to be using pumpkin orange, of course. And again, it's our full part acrylic paint. We're also gonna be using parchment or any off-white color is fine. And then we're gonna be using medium yellow. So this is just like any medium yellow will work. Um, this is just a bright, you know, regular yellow color. So I will definitely show you how to mix those. So let's do our pumpkin orange. So I'm gonna pour a good bit of paint into my cup. You can see, and you can see how like thick and creamy that is. It's just sort, it sort of blobs. It's not watery or liquidy which is one of the great things about full guard acrylic paints because it's great for painting on canvases or base coating. It's got amazing coverage, but you might need to add a little bit more pouring medium. So you can see, I just put a little bit of paint in there and now I'm gonna pour about um, the same amount of pouring medium of our full guard pouring medium. And again, start with a little bit if you're not sure, and then you can always add more, but it's hard to take it away. So I'm gonna mix that up and you can see it's, it pours out white but it's not gonna stay white. We're gonna mix it up completely. So you wanna keep mixing it until it's solid orange again. And that's how you know that it's completely mixed. So you can see it's still a really light color because it's not completely combined. And you don't need to worry about air bubbles. So a lot of times when you're doing stuff like this, if you're mixing, say like resin or something, if that's a craft that you do, you don't wanna stir it quickly because you'll get bubbles into your um, mixture. So for this, you don't need to worry about that because the bubbles really just go away. They kind of pop on their own once they're poured. So it doesn't matter what speed you mix it. Any questions about um, the mixing, Em? Nope, I think everyone's just watching. Okay. And so I'm holding up my toothpick. Oh, there we go. I was gonna say, I was thinking it was a little thick because I wasn't getting that nice uh, run that I like. But then I held it up again and now I'm getting that perfect run. So I think we're, this is a perfect amount. Yeah, I think that's the great and thing about pouring too. If you have too much yeah. paint, you just add more medium if it's too thick. And if you add too much medium, you just add more paint. If it's too thin, it's, it's great. Exactly, exactly. You can't mess up. Nope, you cannot mess it up. That's a really good point. Sometimes I even like to mix colors into the medium. So I'll do like yellow and pink and in the pouring medium and kind of get a surprise. Like, I don't know what color I'm going to end up with because I'm mixing Ooh. it all anyway. So that's kind of a fun way to do it too. Dangerous. <laughs> Living on the edge with my crafting. <laughs> I know. So we've got that really nice run again. So I know that one's perfect. And then our medium yellow that I, I mixed ahead of time too. And I got that nice run. So I know that these are going to be good. These are going to be great. So I'll put these aside. And I went ahead and grabbed a fresh pan. You can see this one's kind of seen better days. We love using these for pouring paint. That's why they're a little beat up. Um, but this is all dry underneath it. And I have this pumpkin here that's just solid orange. And we're going to start pouring right over it. So I'm going to start doing some swirling patterns. So you can see here, if you sort of start at the top and do circles, it sort of drips down on its own. You don't really control it as much as before when we were kind of doing the zigzags back and forth. So that was parchment. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of pumpkin orange onto our orange pumpkin. <laughs> so Lockett has a really good question. Um, is there any order that you like to do to add your colors, like lightest to darkest or vice versa? Yeah, not really, to be honest with you. Um, it's kind of just whatever you're feeling. A lot of times if you're doing something like this, the last color you pour is the color that's going to show most because it's on top of the other colors. So kind of mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Like, so for the last pumpkin, if you remember, we did all the flat colors first and then we did the treasure gold last and that's what you saw the most of. 
So of course you can always like go back and forth and add more colors, um, you know, in the beginning, at the end, whatever. So that doesn't really matter. But it is something to keep in mind. If you just want to do like all of the orange and then all of the white and then all of the parchment, the parchment will probably show the most because it's on top of the other colors. So good question. Yeah, that is a good question. Yeah. And now we're doing our medium yellow. Getting sort of spider web look again. It's because mm -hmm. these pumpkins have these segments in them. So when you're pouring pumpkins, it wants to just run into the cracks between each of those segments and you get these really cool patterns that, that really do look like spider webs. I know, webs. how appropriate. I know, right? The pumpkins make spider web patterns. I know. Again, I'm just sort of tilting it, letting it run down the sides where I want it. That's and this one's great, great too because I can hold it by the stem, so that's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tilt it on the side. I'm going to pour some more pumpkin orange. And it's good that this, this pumpkin is, so is obviously. Relaxing. Oh, sorry. It's okay. It's good that this pumpkin is already orange, but if you had a different color palette and you weren't using those warm yellows and oranges, you could, like you said earlier, you could base coat that pumpkin if you were pouring with blues. And so if you totally. did, you know, have some open areas, it would be covered by the base coat. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, so if we're doing something that, you know, we didn't want that orange to show and we're worried about getting full coverage by pouring all the paint on, that's a great point. You could totally base coat it any color that you want to get it to match your pour. And I'm just kind of making sure I get it onto the bottom, making sure I get it all covered. But again, it doesn't really matter for this one because I don't mind if the orange of the pumpkin shows through. And do a little bit more yellow. Keep those questions coming, guys. I love them. Yeah, absolutely. Let us know if you're crafting along with us, um, what colors you're using. If you are crafting along, if you have any questions for Jesse, I'll ask all your questions. Yeah. And even if you're not making pumpkins, let us know what you're making. What's the, what's the craft that you're working on at home? We'd love to hear what yeah. you guys are up to. Yeah. And add a little more orange for the end. Okay. All right, and again, you just keep tilting it any which way, just trying to manipulate the paint. Okay. And um, so yeah, look how cool that turned out. Isn't that yeah, awesome? Yeah, beautiful. That's really, I really that. cool. I love that. It reminds me of like tie-dye or something. Yeah, it does. And another great thing about using these baking pans is that they are non-stick. So when you're done, just let this dry overnight and you can peel the paint out. And that's great for cleanup, for easy cleanup, but it also you can craft with these. We've got that paint skin right there, Dill. It's just on the end of that, that table. I saw it there earlier. So this is what we like to call paint skins. So when this is totally dry, all the paint's dry, we'll just peel it right out and you get things like this here. So this is a paint skin. This is one that maybe we we're getting ready for Christmas, it looks like. And this is just, this was pulled out of the bottom of a pan and you can cut this out, you can craft with it, um, you can cut shapes out of it, you can stencil it, um, you can Mod Podge it onto other things. So like we've Mod Podge these onto lampshades before, which is so cool. Um, but it's just a great way because you can see that some of this paint's getting wasted. And I know none of us want to waste any craft supplies. I know that I don't. Um, I just love my craft supplies so much. So I love that you can use the leftover paint to do things like this. So let it dry and peel it out and just your, let your imagination run wild. You can do so many things with those. Thank you, mm -hmm. Dylan. Okay, so we went through those kind of quick. Um, we've got another pour, kind of a bonus pour to show you guys. I'm really excited about this one, Jesse. I know, me too. This is kind of, we haven't done this one yet. We were planning it, um, Emma and I, before. So I am excited to see how it turns out. You guys are, it's, this is really live. You're crafting with us. We don't know how it's going to turn out, but we're pretty excited about it. Okay, so we're just going to do a canvas for this last pour. So you can see here, I've got another pan. This maybe even was like a lid or something. I really like this one though, because it's so flat. And I just got my, just a plain old canvas here that we got from Michaels. And we are going to pour some of, one of my other favorite color, or favorite kinds of paints. This is called Color Shift. So if you haven't heard of it, um, this is in our folk art line as well. You can get these at Michael's, um, but these shift in the light. So they're almost iridescent. So when it dries, it's not only metallic, but it's sort of two-toned. So all of the colors shift to a different color. 
um, but they're so beautiful and there's tons of colors to choose from. So we're gonna do a pour on this canvas with these. You've got some like sort of spooky Halloween colors um, here that we're gonna pour with, but I'm, I'm pretty excited. Jesse Sherry has a really good, oh, sorry to interrupt you. No, it's okay. I think there's a delay. I feel bad we keep talking about each other. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, Sherry has a really good question. She wants to know if you prop the pumpkins up to dry on something, what kind of supplies that you might use to do that? That's a great question. So if you're using um, a faux pumpkin especially, you can put um, like push pins in the bottom and it creates kind of feet for the paint to just sort of run off. Um, or a lot of times that we like to use is those like uh, baking racks. So like the, what you would let your like cupcakes or cookies cool on that are sort of elevated, you can put that inside the pan too. Keep it for crafting. I wouldn't bake on it anymore. Um, but we like to use those too, and it kind of just allows the paint to drip off and it won't get stuck to it. That's a really good question. Okay, so I've got my, um, these, this is called a black flash, and I've got my violet flash here. You can see how it's like sort of iridescent. It's so cool, I just love this paint. And then I'm going to mix one for you just to, as a reminder. I know it's, people always like to get reminded of how to mix it together. Um, I'm going to do the orange just to show you guys how to do it with the pouring medium. So again, I'm going to, I don't know why I'm taking the cap lid off. <laughs> I'm going to pour it into my little plastic cup here. And this one shifts almost to purple actually, the orange flash, which is really cool because we're going to be pouring it with purple. And again, we're gonna pour in our folk art pouring medium. I'm gonna start with this a little bit and add more as I need it. And you can really tell that jar of pouring medium goes a long way for all your pouring needs. Oh gosh, we have this. Seriously, we've had this forever. It, it goes so far. Mm -hmm. It's a good investment for sure. Yeah. So you can see again, it's white. You can see the difference between the paint and the pouring medium, but it's not gonna stay white, even though we've got this beautiful, um, we, we poured with the metallic earlier, but this has an awesome sheen and it will not affect the sheen at all, which is so exciting. It won't make it less shiny. It won't take away that shiftiness of the color shift. It'll just be, it's, it'll look like you just pour it right on the bottle, except for we know we didn't because we mixed our pouring medium with it. So you can see already the white's gone away. Okay, so I've got that perfect drizzle. I know it's perfect. So um, like someone asked earlier, how would you let the um, pumpkins dry? And we said push pins. So we always like to stick push pins on the bottom of our canvases because they go in so easily and it creates feet. So it's sort of elevated, sort of lifted off of our surface, but we couldn't find them today. So we're just gonna be real with you. We lost our push pins, but um, if you've got push pins at home, that's a great way to keep your canvas from sticking to whatever surface it's drying on. Or if you, since you already okay. have those plastic cups out, that's a great way to- um, Oh yeah. Great idea. We used to do this all the time until we figured out the push pin technique. Yeah. So here, I'll show what I was talking about. Just put your cups down, upside down, and it works as stilts so your canvas isn't sitting on your surface. So it can run off the edges and it won't get stuck to your surface. So smart, Emma. Why did I forget that? <laughs> so know. Jesse, Fr Friday brain. Yeah, Friday Go brain. Um, Cricket has a really good uh, question. They want to know if any folk art paint will work with the pouring medium, like if glitter folk art paint will work, like our extreme glitter or any metallic paint. Yeah, um, so any metallic paint will work, like I said. So our color shift will work, our treasure gold will work. Uh, the glitter paints, we, we've done a little bit of testing. The glitter paints don't have colors in them. They really just have the glitter with a base, so it doesn't work as well. But that being said, we actually have done some experimenting here in the studio. And if you mix just straight loose glitter with pouring medium, it actually works so it well. It works really well, and yeah. I was honestly really surprised. So you just take the pouring medium and you just scoop in some loose glitter and mix that up. And it's basically like just pouring glitter. glitter like it's explosion. beautiful and it, yeah, it is. And you can mix it with paints too. So you have these like swirls of glitter. Maybe we'll do that. Um, I think we have another pouring class with Michael's coming up. Maybe we'll have to show yeah. you guys that one because it's really good. It really surprised me. It was a big um, yeah. aha day in the studio. <laughs> I was like, we fine, I'll excited. try it. But I'm telling you, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. <laughs> and I was definitely wrong because it looked awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, here is our orange flash. So I'm going to start pouring it on this canvas. Again, we kind of start off the edge. Hope I have enough. And you can go in any pattern you want. If you want more or less of a color, 
it's totally up to you. So there's some of our orange, and then we'll do, let's do our black next. I may even add some of that treasure gold if I'm feeling it, let's see. So this is our black color shift, it's called Black Flash, which is beautiful, it's almost like bronzy looking. It's so pretty, it like shifts to this like beautiful bronze. That's I'm gonna really start pretty. tilting these and see how it goes. You can see they just start to run and move around into these awesome shapes and patterns. I just love it. So I'm going to add some more paint. I'm actually going to put some of this treasure gold in here. I'm going rogue. I think this will be really pretty. It's sort of orangey. It kind of reminds me of these colors. So I'm going to add some treasure gold too. Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty. I love, I love this copper treasure gold for, um, for like Halloween and fall because it reminds me of like a metallic orange. Just let it all blend together. Just let it tilt that way. Kind of like to go every which way. Try to cover the canvas. And then I'm going to add, lastly, our violet shift. So I'm going to try to focus now, this is our last color, on some of the areas where, where we haven't gotten it covered in paint yet, just to make sure that I cover up all the canvas. And I love the way that purple looks with the mm -hmm. copper. That's so fun for Halloween. It really brightens it up. Yeah. So let's see. I can't wait to see this one move around. So fun. Mm How's -hmm. everybody doing? Em, any more questions? Good. Yeah. Sue had a question earlier. Um, she wanted to know how to get the air bubbles out of your pour. And I told her that we just like to lightly tap the back frame of the canvas with like a small hammer or the end of a screwdriver, yeah. whatever you have. That works every time. It mm -hmm. works every time. Just give it a good thud on the back of it, and those air bubbles will pop right out. Yep. And Cricket said their Michael's list is growing. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Ours is always growing too. We have like a running list of things that we want to buy at Michael's. It's like a grocery so list, but it. for crafts. Exactly. Honestly, we do. Look how cool that looks. I just love it. It's so fun for Halloween. So Jesse, LaDonna has a really good question. Is there any paint with medium in it already? Say it again. Sorry, LaDonna has oh, a yes, really good is. question. Yeah. I thought about it and then I heard you. Okay. Yes, we do um, we actually have some folk art um, pre-mixed pouring paint. So um, the benefit of that is that you don't need to mix it. So we've got an array of colors. Um, we've got a lot of colors in that line. So you just buy it and you just take the bottle. Oh, Dylan's got some right here for me. Um, so this is our pre-mixed pouring paint. So you can get this at Michael's too. So this is great because you just literally pour it right out of the bottle. You don't need to mix it with the medium. The medium is already in there. So um, the benefit of this is it saves you time. Um, you don't have to do any mixing. But the benefit of the other one is that you can do any color ever of acrylic paint. So that's kind of the, the you know, trade-off is that there's this limited colors in this line, of course. And there's like 10 colors or something to choose from, which are all beautiful and great for this. Um, but you get to, you don't have to mix it. So it's kind of like what, what's, you know, pick your poison. Which one do you yeah. prefer? So either no mixing or unlimited colors, it's up to you. Great question. Yeah, awesome question. That's looking really cool, Jesse. Awesome, thanks. I think I'm gonna leave it there. Maybe I'll pour a little bit. There's a, still a little bit of like canvas showing. So look, here's a, another cool thing that I do sometimes is while it's still super wet, you can sort of just go back and like cover up with a popsicle stick. See, I have these like little gaps that I just didn't quite get to with the paint pour. So I'll kind of go in and I'll drop some just with my popsicle stick, just like a little more strategically to get those covered and then we can swirl those around too so they they look more um random like the rest of our pattern so i'm just kind of putting it on the sides here I'll do the same with my purple maybe because you can see there's some white spots still showing and i don't want to mix any more paint but i definitely don't want to see those white spots on my beautiful pour so you kind of just go in really carefully and just add that on because i so never like to see any rock in this Sorry, we yeah. have a lot of questions. Someone wants to know if you can mix uh, two pre-mixed colors together to make a different color. 
100% you can. So like if you bought the red and the green, or don't buy red and green. <laughs> if you bought yeah. like, the red and the blue, you mix purple, or if you wanted to do, you know, the orange and the yellow and get like a tangerine color, you absolutely could do that. That's a great idea. So you can get more colors that way. So smart. And so one more question. Someone wants to know if they can use yeah. a heat gun on their pumpkin. And I, um, I assume they're talking about if they want to pop air bubbles like you would resin. Yeah. You know, we've tried that and we haven't really found that it, it pops the bubbles, bubbles for this kind of stuff. So yeah. I know that it works for resin. I know that you need to keep adding heat to resin to get those bubbles out. But for the acrylic paint pours, when it's just mixed with the medium, I haven't found that it does anything. It doesn't. And also you run the risk of blowing your paint around because it's so um, loose. So, I mean, give it a try and let us know. But um, yeah, I haven't had success with the heat gun. I prefer just like the tapping underneath. See, I can even see bubbles like now. So I just sort of take my finger and I'm like thudding underneath it. This could get really messy, but that's just how you get the bubbles out. Awesome. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, super pretty. So Jesse, Lisa wants to know if there's any like tips and tricks to, uh, to paint the sides of your canvas right now to get a more fin finished look. Yeah, you can do what, kind of what I was doing um, just then with the popsicle stick. You can kind of go through and take some of your paint, your, whatever colors you're using, and just sort of dab it onto the side. So usually whenever I do a paint pour, I kind of just let it run over the sides and I usually pour enough paint on it where it gets in the sides. But I don't want to make this one, I don't, I don't want to push this one because there's always, you always sort of uh, tilt it more than you should, or at least I do. I know whenever I finished tilting it, I probably should have stopped like a minute and a half ago. Um, so that being said, I didn't want to tilt it anymore because I really liked the pattern and that's why I didn't end up getting all the sides. So I'm just kind of going back now with my popsicle stick and my paint and just sort of tapping on the sides so that it looks like it's part of the design and I don't have any of that um, raw canvas showing anymore. Awesome. Or you could have, we could have base coated the canvas just like the pumpkin earlier. We could have painted it, you know, with purple color shift or something and then it would just match the form. We wouldn't need to worry about it if we missed any areas. That's another way to do it. Jesse, Susan said um, when she was still working, her son always said that she had have just she should just give her paycheck uh, made out to Michaels and cut out the middleman. I know, I know that's so funny. I actually said that when I was a few years ago interviewing here to work at Flat, and I was like, I'm just gonna tell them they can just pay me in paint. And my yeah. mom was like, Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> I know, but I just trust me. I feel ya. I feel ya. Mm -hmm. All right, are there any more questions or comments, then? Yeah, if you don't mind, I'm um, just going over of uh, mixing one of the paints one more time with the pouring medium just to get some clarification. Yeah, no problem at all. Okay, so let's do one more so you guys have it fresh in your mind um, for when you go now and do all of your own pouring projects. I don't wanna move this, I'm scared to knock it over, so I'm just gonna work with this little space here. So I've got my cup here, and yeah, I've got enough treasure gold here, I can do this one. I'm gonna pour my treasure gold in here. And then I'm going to pour my pouring medium in. So again, this is our folk art pouring medium that you can get at Michael's. And so I'm just gonna pour a little bit at a time. Like I said, for our regular folk art acrylic paints, we usually recommend a one-to-one -one ratio. So one part paint and one part pouring medium. Um, if you're using a different paint that's not our regular folk art acrylics, you might need a little bit less. It's a little bit thinner in consistency. So as you can see here, I just added a little bit of pouring medium for now. And you can see it's white, but it won't be white once you mix it. So I'm just gonna mix that up. And again, what's great about the pouring medium is that um, it keeps your paint flowing really smoothly on the canvas. But also you can see here, we poured all these crazy colors on here and not in not one area got muddy. All of the colors are still pure. They're still true to the way they looked when we poured them on. And that's because of the pouring medium. It keeps the colors from blending together and getting brown and muddy. So that's really the benefit. Yeah. Because if you were just to pour, you know, thin paint on there, they would just all blend together and it'd be a big muddy mess. And nobody wants that. Just so again, I look for this. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Do you have any recommendations for um, keeping your paint um, wet if you wanted to store this for a little bit of time uh, before you pour after you're done mixing? Yeah, totally. If you have like some sort of resealable bottles or like maybe like Tupperwares or something, I bet you anything. I don't, we haven't really tried that, like storing them once they're mixed. Um, but yeah, I would definitely give it a shot. You could use like those squirt bottles you can buy from Michaels um, or like I said, Tupperware. And I think it will definitely last you a couple of days for sure. Yeah. That's a great question. Um, and I answered this in the chat. We probably want to give these projects about 24 hours to dry, but um, 
Would you agree with that? Yeah, there's Jess? a lot of paint on there. You guys saw how much paint we just dumped on there. So we're definitely going to give this until tomorrow to dry. So tomorrow we'll come in um, and it'll be, well, we won't come in because it's Saturday, but Monday when we come in, it'll be nice and dry. Yeah. Yeah. I'd give it 12 to 24 hours, no matter how big or yeah. how thick your paint is. I feel like that's a good yeah. period of time. Okay. So we're mixing these together and this is, so we did um, one part paint and we did a little bit of pouring medium and we want that string, that sort of syrupy string that you can see that sort of line. That's how you know it's a good consistency for pouring. So hopefully that's a good refresher in your mind. We're going to have to definitely use all these uh, after we're done with the Zoom and pour, dump them on something because you can't let the paint go to waste. Um, but that's it. I think that's all we have for today. Em, any more questions before we sign off? I don't think so. Uh, this is a great uh, comment to end on. Someone said they've watched a bunch of craft classes that Michaels has, but this is the first time they really feel like they'll be able to master this project, which I feel like is a total okay. success. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, this is definitely a beginner friendly craft. So yes. I highly recommend you just try it. If you feel like you're not an artist or you feel like some of these crafts intimidate you, this is the craft for you. You really can't go wrong. You'll end up with a beautiful piece of art no matter what. Um, so like I said, make sure you check out. We've got another class. I believe it's the same time next week, but check out Michael's calendar. We've got another great fall pouring class for you. Um, so if you want a little bit, a little more idea, a little more inspiration, make sure you sign up for that one. Uh, we've also got lots of other classes with Michael's Community Classrooms. Um, we're here Monday nights doing painting classes, so make sure to check that out as well. Um, and thank you so much for watching, and thank you to Michael's for having us, and we will see you next time. Bye. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Bye.